Today, regulators in the Bahamas may have already seized hundreds of millions from FTX. VC firm Multicoin warns more companies could go under in the wake of FTX's collapse. And Jeff Dorman of ARCA explains how long this crypto contagion could last. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World. I'm Pippa Stevens. Cryptocurrencies are mixed to close out yet another volatile week. By noon Eastern, Bitcoin traded around $16,500, while Ether rose to $1,200. Meanwhile, XRP is sliding this morning, even after Ripple announced it would be seeking a license in Ireland as part of a push to expand in Europe. In the past seven days, Bitcoin dropped about 1.3%, adding to last week's dramatic sell-off. Ether fell about 4% in that same time frame. Okay, let's catch you up on the top stories. First up, crypto VC firm Multicoin is warning that many trading firms will get wiped out from FTX's failure. In a letter to investors, the venture firm disclosed that its performance was down 55% for the month thanks to FTX's bankruptcy and the market sell-off that followed. What's worse, Multicoin says investors should expect the market to fall even more before it rebounds. The VC firm, which recently launched a $430 million fund aimed at early-stage crypto projects, said in the investor letter obtained by CNBC that it put, quote, entirely too much trust in FTX and had too many assets on the exchange. Of course, tracking down where exactly FTX's assets are has been a huge undertaking as bankruptcy proceedings get underway and Bahamian officials just confirmed they're holding some of FTX's assets. In a statement, the Securities Commission of the Bahamas confirmed it directed the transfer of all digital assets of FTX Digital Markets, which is a subsidiary of FTX. Now, we don't know how much money was transferred, but research firm Elliptic says the $477 million hack over the weekend could be tied to the transfer. The directive from SCB also sets up a fight with U.S. regulators who claim they're the ones who have jurisdiction over bankruptcy proceedings. An emergency court filing from U.S. officials challenged Bahamian liquidators' authority in those proceedings. Last up, Kraken CEO David Ripley joined CNBC to discuss the fallout from FTX. Ripley highlighted the importance of regular audits and commitment to customers. I do think there's uh, a need for really a holistic pro approach and commitment uh, to customer funds. We don't, you know, we're not exposed to FTX. We're not exposed to uh, Genesis or Voyager or BlockFi or any of these other uh, companies in the space. And so I think it's really a holistic approach that's necessary. Exchanges have scrambled to release proof of reserves and reassure customers their funds are safe. At the same time, though, a report from Bank of America found that these statements may have too many shortcomings because they're only a snapshot in time. Exchanges could borrow money right before the statement to boost reserves or manipulate third-party auditing firms to paint a better picture for their reserves. Kraken's CEO addressed some of the concerns around the firm's own reporting, like how its 2021 audit only showed two thirds of its reserves. We've been in this space for a long time, for, for a decade now. And so we've you know, continued to, to invest in security all throughout. And I mean, again, it's, it's an approach that, uh, as you noted, I mean, the proof of reserves is, is only one component of you know, investing in clients. And we think it's a critical component. It's one that we've you know, invested in and we're gonna continue to invest in and, and grow over, the time, over time. All right, on to our main story. As the aftershocks from the collapse of FTX rage on and as contagion spreads, Crypto World's Talia Kaplan spoke with Jeff Dorman, the chief investment officer of crypto hedge fund ARCA, about what the industry can expect moving forward. So we're starting to see contagion with Genesis announcing new restrictions, for example. Do you think this will continue or do you think this can be contained? Usually when you see a situation as, as big and, and far reaching as what's happening with F FTX and you know, Sam Bankman Freed's uh, empire, uh, there's always going to be more unknowns than knowns. Um, you know, in general, investors hate uncertainty more than they hate bad outcomes. You know, we can handle bad outcomes. We can analyze them. But when it's uncertainty and rumors, that's when things get really challenging. And that's the window that we're in right now. It actually looks very similar to what we saw in May and June, uh, you know, early mid-May when Terra Luna and UST uh, imploded. 
And it was four weeks later when we finally got the clarity around the Celsius bankruptcy, the Voyager bankruptcy, the Three Arrows bankruptcy. And I think we're in that same window right now where everyone's trying to figure out exactly you know, where the bodies are buried and, and who's going to come out of this uh, unscathed versus those that are, you know, may not come back. You know, you've already seen things like you mentioned with Genesis. There's probably a few others as well. Um, but it's a little bit of a different setup heading into this. Um, into May and June, everybody was long. There was a lot more leverage in the system. You know, over the last four or five months with what's happening in the macro economy, as well as just idiosyncratic events within digital assets, there was a lot more uh, people with cash, a lot more people who were short. So I, I don't think there will be as much collateral damage here, um, but certainly there will be some more. I know that ARCA's flagship fund had exposure to the Terra ecosystem, which you mentioned collapsed in May. How would you compare and contrast the two situations? What happened back then and what's happening now? Sure. Uh, they're really very different. Um, Terra Luna was a crypto problem, right? That was an experimental blockchain. Most people knew the risks. Um, uh, you know, it may not have been very well disclosed necessarily for people who were buying UST and staking it just to earn the 20% yield exactly how the mechanism worked, but the mechanism itself was transparent. That was a blockchain related problem. And therefore, most who got hurt by that made a bad investment decision. Um, this is very different, right? This one to me has nothing to do with crypto, right? This was, this was just finance fraud. FTX could have been, you know, they could have been handling commodities or uh, equities or bonds or baseball cards. It didn't matter. They were committing fraud. The underlying asset in this case had nothing to do with it. Um, you know, and, and I think that's a really big distinction. Uh, when investors always ask us about risk management, of course, what they're really asking about is how we're going to protect against losses on the downside. But we always answer with risk management starts well before we make our first investment. Risk management starts with who are we onboarding? Who are we using as counterparties? Um, you know, we don't take for granted that in the debt and equity world, the counterparties you use have been around for 100 years and everybody already knows them and uses them. Whereas everybody, um, even those that may be considered tier one in the crypto world are brand new. I mean, they're less than five years old. So you have to do a lot of due diligence on your counterparties um, before you even get to investment. So, again, you know, the fallout may be the same in terms of certain businesses will uh, go under um, and, you know, there will be some losses. But to me, these were generated for very different reasons, right? A, a blockchain related experimental failure is very different than financial fraud. Multicoin Capital, which took a hit from FTX's collapse, told investors in a letter yesterday that they anticipate even more failures, specifically that many trading firms will be wiped out. Do you agree? Yeah, I mean, generally you get a hysteria when something this big and this public uh, uh, fails, right? And, and it's important to be objective and try to figure out like, well, who really is at risk here instead of just assuming the whole industry, right? You know, I, I, I use the analogy that, you know, when the zookeeper commits a felony, you don't blame the lions, tigers, and bears. Um, you know, again, this is not to me a crypto problem, right? There's many of, there's many digital assets and tokens and parts of this industry that are completely unaffected and unrelated to the issues that happen. So who is affected? Well, you know, first and foremost, obviously, and unfortunately, it's anybody who had assets on FTX, the exchange itself. Um, you know, our early estimates are very low recovery um, for, for, for assets that are stuck there. So that's a huge problem, not only for the assets you have stuck there, but also any assets that you didn't have on there. It's a good chance those are now being liquidated, especially if you run a fund, because you're going to start having to face redemptions with investors and, and liquidate whatever you have. So I think those with exposure um, immediately to FTX, and that, that could be individuals, that could be funds, that could be projects that you know maybe raised money from FTX or Alameda and were forced to, to hold some of their assets on FTX. I think that's the, 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 the biggest um, people and groups of people who are at risk. Um, next is probably the Bitcoin miners. Uh, and I know that sounds weird because it's somewhat um, tangential, but the Bitcoin mining industry is already in trouble in the sense that their revenues are no longer covering the costs. Um, when you have all time ha high hash rates, your costs uh, are, are higher than the amount of Bitcoin that you're producing. And on top of that, it's very difficult to fund your business with dollar loans when the value of your collateral, meaning the Bitcoin keeps going lower and the counterparties who are lending are no longer lending, right? Because all the lenders are in trouble and, and also, you know, becoming more stringent with their loans. So I think Bitcoin will remain under pressure and miners specifically are going to have some real problems. Um, you probably will see some more bankruptcy there. Um, and then third is the market makers, right? And you had alluded to this with regard to trading firms. But, you know, this is a very fragmented trading industry. It's very similar to corporate bonds. 
Um, you know, if you trade equities, for example, you're trading on two exchanges basically in the U.S. But if you trade bonds, you know, there is no exchange. It's all OTC and there's 50 to 100 different brokers out there. And you're getting trading quotes from every single one of them, from your Goldman's, from your Jefferies, from your Bank of America's, from your JP Morgan's, from your BTIG's. But you don't have to post collateral to trade with them, right? All you have to do is settle after the fact T plus three. But if you're making markets um, and crypto exchanges, you have to have physical assets on those exchanges in order to do it, which means it's a very working capital intensive business. Every single market maker had assets on FTX because it was the third biggest exchange. So they had to. But they also have assets all over, right, from Binance to Coinbase to Kraken to Gemini, all these different places. And in a lot of cases, they had to take out uh, loans in order to get that working capital to provide markets. So when you when you sum it all up, they, they took losses in terms of loss of principal on FTX itself. They are going to have a much harder time getting loans from the lending industry to uh, allow them to continue. And, you know, you really don't understand where the safe place to make markets is anymore because every exchange right now is, is under the gun with regard to transparency and, and any other wrongdoing. So I think that is bad for the industry in terms of less liquidity. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, it probably will mean um, smaller positions uh, and less trading volumes, at least for a while until we sort this out. All right, before we go, Maxine Waters, chair of the House Financial Services Committee, joined Closing Bell yesterday to discuss the criminal investigation into claims of fraud against Sam Bankman-Fried. Take a listen. We believe uh, that there's fraud uh, and that citizens' uh, investments have been compromised. And we think that an investigation is absolutely necessary to really understand what has taken place with FTX. And if FTX is found uh, to have contributed uh, to the criminal activity that is being alleged, then certainly uh, they should be accountable. Okay, that's all for Crypto World this week, but we are back again on Monday and we'll see you then.